Hello, welcome to Tuesdays with the Ambassador of Hope. What a joy to be back with you tonight. Hey, every day alive, it's a good day. You are above the ground, you know that. So long as there's breath in your nostrils, there's a heartbeat in your chest, God is good. We bless God for his goodness. We bless God for keeping us alive. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to come your way. Like I told you, Tuesdays with the Ambassador of Hope is not a church. It's not in competition with the church. We are just here to compliment what your pastors, your prophets, your teachers, your apostles, your pastors are already doing. I came with just a little building block to make life better. At the end of the day, if I'm able to make you want to go forward, get up again, fight on, press on, in spite of the sweat, blood, and tears, I'll sleep well. What a joy to have you. I'm so glad you are here. Thank you all my partners. Thank you all my friends. Thank you all my family. I'm going to share something with you later. But we thank God for your life. We thank God for your life. And listen, let me pick up your tablet, pick up your device, whatever, and let's share. Share right now. Please share. Begin to share. And make sure that uh, you, 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 you have the, 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 you know, the subscription thing so that we can give you notifications. So right here on, on YouTube, we have friends and family on YouTube. We have people on uh, Facebook. Come on, come on, come on. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. This is Tuesdays with the Ambassador of Hope. I'm going to give you just 30 seconds. Come on, share. Share with somebody. Share with somebody. Share with somebody. It's very exciting. And let's welcome all our friends and family. We've got friends and family on YouTube. You are all here on YouTube. God bless you so, so, so much. I see you here, Liz K. Liz K, God bless. So good to see you. Good evening to you too. Hey, Nkoyo, we expect success coming our way. God bless you so much. All of you, God richly bless you. Let's look at our Facebook family. Please make sure that you share, you get in touch with other people. So many of us here. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. Pastor Mina, good evening. Good to have you. Shepherd, all the way from Kerry's house, Ghana. Nana, how are you doing? I trust you are doing good. Michelle Ray. Yes, we are live. We are live. We are live here. Please share. Michelle Ray says, let's share, let's share, let's share, let's share. God bless you. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. My own Honorable Adume J. God bless you. Really, really, really good. Davina Nchugula. Good evening to you. Good evening, Sonia. How are you doing tonight? I hope you are doing very well. Mark. Mark the billionaire. Mark Pesima. God bless. Bread Quartz. Bread uh, the wise. How, Bridget? How are you doing? I hope marriage is good. God bless you. So proud of you. Big girl, big girl. Yes, it's going to be fire tonight. Hey, it's going to be awesome. I can promise we are beginning a brand new journey. It's never going to be boring. It will make you sad, it will make you glad, but it will make you good. Let's go ahead. Jennifer. Jennifer, all the way from the Republic of North Carolina. From Nebraska, Omaha, Nebraska. El, El Mark, God bless you. Yes, it's going to be epic. Deborah, have you, hey guys, have you downloaded Deborah Peters' thing, her, her, her single? You better do that. You better do that or we're not going to be friends. Listen, it's amazing. Make sure you get it. Make sure you get it. Eunice, Eunice, God bless you all the way from Virginia. God richly bless you. There's a certain Mary Fosopia watching. Mary Fosopia, how are you? I hope your husband is doing well. <laughs> God bless. Adelaide, Adelaide from Delaware. God bless you. Victoria. Victoria, how are you doing? Cincinnati, Ohio. Maybe Sakuya. Akia Doa, God bless. So good to have you online. Alex, just saw your message. I'll get back to you very soon. I'll write after this. Dr. Mary of Ajibai from Accra, Ghana. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Wow, well, got so many, so many, so many, so many here. Hey, Raymond, Raymond, God bless you. So good to have you. Benny Speckle, oh, Nana. Nana, how are you doing? Hi, come here, General. Lord, God Almighty, this is. Please. Please, <laughs> Abigail, Abigail Toku, Kerry South Ghana, God bless you. Our own Yvonne, Yvonne, how are you doing today? I hope you and Clement and everybody are doing very well. Simone, Simone, bless you. Or any Boateng, all my friends and family and partners. My God, I'm so excited to be here with you. God, richly, listen, give us some thumbs up, give us some hearts, but better still share, 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 share. In two, three minutes, we're going to go. But listen, today, it's International Women's Day. And I want to stop this moment to salute all women, to salute all women all over the world, on our platform, 
all over the world, these United States, all the nations of the world, or all the continents of the world, women, you are amazing. You know, I, I see the, the, the theme all over, let's break the bias. Let's, it's true. Women have suffered so much bias. You know something? Sometimes the men are jealous. I must say, God richly bless you. You carry, God had to rent the womb of a woman to incubate the Messiah for nine months. Not the womb of a man. It's the womb of a woman. She gave it up so that God will become man. The enemy hates you. He hates you because you carry grace. God bless you. Any woman listening to me today, any woman listening to me today, whatever you are going through, the abuse, the pain, the frustration, let me tell you something, it's not going to be like that forever. God bless you. God richly bless you. We salute you. We love you. We cherish you. You are not second class. Listen, we are different, but we are equal. God richly bless you. Happy International Women's Day. And not just the day, life. We love you. Let's get on. God bless you, Rigo. Let's see what we've got here. Ofe Joshua Kalikradis, God bless you. Louisa Misifash, God bless you, Rigo. Adam, Adam, thank you. Reverend Marilyn Opukwe Champon from Accra, Ghana, God bless you so, so much. Victoria Ofosuama, how are you doing? Julia Lemoa, blessings upon you today. Ah, wow, it's just rolling, it's rolling, it's rolling, it's rolling. Adjua Frema. I cannot leave you out. God richly bless you. Isaac Amwa Ofe. Blessings upon you. Sila, Baba, how are you doing tonight? I hope you are doing very well. God bless you so, so, so much. Hey, wisdom, Lois, is true. Wisdom is profitable to direct. And tonight, you're desperate to hear from me. Oh, Lord, it makes me humble. Thank you. We're going to deliver. Mary Frempo, God bless you. Auntie Mary, how are you doing? God richly bless you. We love you so, so, so much. Why is the maker? I hope you marry my daughter well for me. God bless you. Ibi, Ibi, how are you doing? Say hi to Indira for me. I'm sure she's watching with you. Mary Sweets, how are you doing tonight? So good to have you. Pastor Manny Japo, Kerry South Ghana. Welcome to ATL, the ATL. God bless you. Joyce, Joyce for Lemu. Joyce, how are you doing? God bless you so, so, so much. Wow, so many can spend forever, but I'll come back, I'll come back. But you know something? Let's get right on into business. Let's get in. I'll still come back and just acknowledge some more of you who are here. I, I really, really, really appreciate you. Thank you for, for coming. I know you could have spent your time doing other things, but thank you so much for being here. You are such an encouragement. Hey, Phoebe, God bless you. Phoebe, God bless you. Phoebe, happy birthday again uh, for the last time. God bless you. Um, Celia Baba, listen, I'm going to be a, 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 a tune-up here. Um, Martin Bio says, call her after this. this you have to pay, you have to pay Martin. You have to pay me for this. You know, I'm making that connection. So Celia, that's your message. you got to call Koju. God richly bless. Anyway, welcome to the month of March. Welcome to the month of March. Like we have announced, we are taking a, we are taking a, a trajectory called the Exceptional Walk. And you know something? This is episode number 440. We've been doing this for 40 weeks. Can you imagine? Time flies when you're having fun. And this is a month that we are going to start this wonderful thing. Listen, it's going to be different. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be eye-opening. It's going to be engaging. It's going to be mindset altering. It's going to put some fire under your feet to become everything that God has ordained for you to be. In fact, at the end of the day, people must look at you and hardly recognize you because they thought that nothing good could come out of you. But something great is coming out of you. In the little clip that I put out in the morning, if you saw it, I said that we are living today in a world of war. Uh -huh. The whole world is, is we, we, we've been captured by, by war, as it were. You know, in, in Europe, there's a war going on. Terrible. People are saying it could easily become the third world war. That's why tonight we stop and we pray for Ukraine, we pray over Russia, we pray over Europe, we pray over the world that the peace of God will prevail. Like the, the prophet said that people will beat their swords into plowshares. Instead of weapons of war, let there be weapons of famine in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But let me tell you something, there's a bigger war raging. And that war is not with missiles of the hands or war planes or, or cruise missiles or smart bombs, but it's the war for your life. The biggest battle that you are fighting today is the war between who you used to be or who you are and who you can be. And that is the war we are fighting today. And the title today and the days ahead is 
the exceptional work. Exceptional work. These two words, these two words, exceptional and work, they will inform our theme this morning. Exceptional and then the work. We are going to look at these two. So when we say exceptional, when we say exceptional, what, what do we mean? Let me give you some of the synonyms for the word exceptional. It means you are not typical. You are not, people cannot just, oh, yeah, it's typical of them. You, it, they, they just pigeonhole you. No. It means you are not typical. Let me tell you something. After today and tomorrow, and I mean next week, the, I mean the month of March, after we have spent time together, nobody will be able to categorize you as typical. It means you are notable. You are notable. You will stick out. You will stick out. I, I, I kid you. You may not be the tallest in the room. You may not be the most, most glaring, but you will stick out. You will be notable for all the achievements that you will do. So much power will be packaged in so little that people will be surprised. It also means that you are uncommon. You are exceptional. It means you are uncommon. It also means you are remarkable. My God, can somebody say I'm remarkable? That, you, that can easily be your middle name. You are remarkable. It means you are phenomenal. You are phenomenal. People take a look, look at you and they look at you again. They wake up in the middle of the night to go and check your, check your status because you are remarkable. And finally, you are not like everybody else. So I can say that when you are exceptional, it means you are not like the ordinary people. You are not ordinary. Please, I want you to imbibe these words that I'm speaking to you. I want you to take them on the inside of you because this is backed by the authority of the word of God as we go into the word of God together. You are going to stand out. You are going to shine. You are, you, no, you are not easily figured out. You've heard me say it many, many times that if your enemies or your haters or your detractors can explain you easily, then you are too ordinary. But the day comes after today that they thought they knew you. But the next time they meet you, they're going to be in for a rude awakening. That we thought we had buttonholed her. We thought we had pigeonholed him. We thought we had got him or her figured out. But somehow they have attained something that is amazing. Hear me. When I say you're exceptional, it means you attain what people may consider unattainable for you. So let me say this. I'm going to put it on your screen for you. When I say you are exceptional, when you, when you walk an exceptional walk, it means how other people live does not inform how you live. How people, other people live does not inform how li you live, which means regardless of the economy of your nation, regardless of all the rules and regulations that geopolitics have put on you, what pe how people live their lives will not inform how you live. You are not a copycat. You will not reduce yourself because, hey, this is hard. People can't do this. You are white. You are black. You are a female. You are this. You are a teenager. No. How people, in fact, let me say it better. What, let me say it better. Let me say it better. And I'm going to put another one there for you. Listen, screenshot it. Write it down. When you are exceptional, it means what happens to others. Note it carefully. When I put it there, please, screenshot, take it. What happens to others does not determine what happens to you. What happens to others does not determine what happens to you. Now, my screen, I, I just left out something. So, what happens, put in others. What happens to others does not determine what happens to you. It is a revelation that when I caught, my life became different. Because many times, we live our lives by, by what, by, informed by what has happened to others. Oh, this is what happened to this, so and so. This is how so and so went through this. This is how so and so went here. And listen, when you catch the revelation that you are different, you begin to walk a different walk. You begin to achieve different. You begin to do things that do not make sense. Let me give you a couple of examples from the book. You know, Moses had worked with God for many years. He had, he had traveled with God and he had come to that place where he said, Lord, let your presence go with us. And the Lord said, well, my presence will go. Then they began to talk. And Moses said something very powerful in Exodus chapter 33 and verse number 15 and 16. Moses said, if you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this. This man is wise. You can lose everything, but if you have the presence of God, you are in good business. He said, if you don't go with us presently, don't make us leave this place. Now let's go on to the next verse. He said, how will anyone know that you look favorably on me, on me and your people if you don't go with us? Now look at this. For your presence amongst us sets your people and me apart. Exceptional. Sets us apart from other people on the earth. You can be that. You are not like everybody else. 
You will be set apart. You are exceptional. Your business is exceptional. Listen, a million people can advertise, but just one, one, one person that sees you will take the advertisement and spread, spread it all the, over the place because you are exceptional. Your competitors will not know what hit them. Your business, your career, your ministry, because there's something about you that makes you apart from all other people. One of the saddest scriptures that I ever read was in the book of Judges about the great man called Samson. You know, and Samson had this encounter with Delilah, and Delilah wanted to find the secret of his strength. And in Judges chapter 16, when you read verse number 17, Samson began to share the secret of his covenant. He, said, he told her all that was in her, no razor has ever come upon my head. I've been a Nazareth. He says that if I'm shaving, then my strength will leave me. I shall become weak and be like any other man. Which means Samson was a substance. He was not like any other person. Listen to me, lady. Listen to me, gentlemen. You are not like any other person. Regardless of what they have, they have said in your family. That we are like this. We are like this. We can't do this. We can't go here. You are not like anybody else. You are exceptional. You are different. You are extraordinary. You are a phenomenon. You stick out. You shine. Are you getting me tonight? I hope you are getting me tonight. Jesus said it this way. He was speaking to his apprentices called the disciples. And for all, for that matter, all of us, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, he alluded to the fact that you are salt of the earth. And number 2, verse 14, he said you are light. Salt and light. Can you imagine? Salt doesn't shout. Salt doesn't... Have, have you ever tasted Have you ever, ever tasted tea salt? Or, or, or beefy salt? But it's a salty beef. Anytime salt touches something, salt takes over. And that is what you are. Light, no matter how weak, no matter how flickering, if it comes into a situation, it begins to shine. Are you getting the drift? Listen, you are not like anybody else. Stop allowing people. Stop allowing circumstances. Stop allowing situations. Stop allowing your bad past history or your present, your present hassle to define you. I want to stop. I want wherever you are. Listen, say it. Say, I want you to say it until I hear it. Say it to yourself. Let your ears hear what you are going to say from your lips to your own ear. Say, I am exceptional. Say it like you mean it. Oh, please say it. Please say it. Say, I am exceptional. You can type it. You can shout it. You can scream it. But say, I am exceptional. Use it as your, as your screensaver. Use it as your WhatsApp status. You are exceptional. Listen, when I, say, when I say you are exceptional, I am not saying you will not experience what other people experience. If I say that, then I'm lying. Because we, are, we live in a sinful world. Things happen. Things we haven't asked for, things we don't bargain for, sometimes things blindside us. But what I'm saying is that we may experience what other people experience, but our outcome will be different. We will all go through what people go through, but we will not come out the way they came out. We will all go through the fire. How they come out or whether they don't come out, that's their business. But to you and I, the exceptional people with the hand of God upon our lives, how we come out is very, very, very important because we are exceptional. Because listen, you may go into, you may go, you and people will go through a test. That test may destroy them. But your test is your testimony in motion. I like that. Your test is a testimony in motion. Oh, we all stand before mountains. They look impregnable. They look staggering. They look like, like a barrier. But you know something? That mountain will become your penthouse under construction. Oh, I love this. I love this. Listen, I am not, I am not a person who lives in denial. Facts are facts. Things are things. But I live in revelation that nothing will inhibit me. Listen, nothing must inhibit you. Nothing must imprison you. You know why? Because you are not like everybody else. You are exceptional. So that is exceptional. Now let's look at work. Work. The exceptional work. You love this. Because that is going to be our blueprint, our blueprint for this year. Your work. Now, I want you to notice this. Walking is normal. Walking is a blessing. You don't take walking for granted. But walking is not unusual. Walking is normal. Everybody walks. That's no big deal. You look through the Bible, it talks about and Enoch walked with God. Moses walked up the mountain. Jesus walked with his disciples. Everybody walks. So you are asking me, 
What is the, then what is the big deal about exceptional work? Is it like after today we're going to have a new swag and work different? Like a jitterbug? I'm glad you asked because it means you are ready to explore. You are ready to inquire. You are ready to enter. You are ready to explode to the glory of God. Now let's read the scripture. Now I'm going to show you how significant that work is. Matthew chapter 14, verse number 22. We're going to read it very quickly. A very familiar scripture. Jesus made his disciples get in the boat to go before him to the other side whilst he sent the disciples away, the multitudes away. Now note it carefully. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up to the mountain by himself, alone, alone, to pray. Now when now remember the disciples, he had sent them away to row. They were rowing, but he had gone up to pray. Now when evening came, he was there alone. The boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves for the wind was gone. It was about a four-mile ride. But they were struggling. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. Now wait a minute. They had a head start. They had been rowing. So many hours. Now Jesus is with them <laughs> walking on the sea. Now let's go ahead. That's interesting. Walking. Walking. Now when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. They had to. You see, when people see your exceptional work, they'll be troubled. They can't understand. Saying it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, Hey, be of good cheer. Chill. It's I. Do not be afraid. Now look at this. Simon Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And then Jesus said, Come. When pa Sir, and Peter had come down out of the boat. He walked on the water to go to Jesus. Walk. Exceptional. Exceptional walk. Walked on water. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And then they got into the boat and the wind ceased. And the Bible says, those that were in the boat came and worshipped him and said, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the manifestation of an exceptional work. You see, the issue that I am picking up in this series is not about Jesus walking on water. No. I'm not surprised that Jesus walked on water. He doesn't. I mean, listen, miracles with water is all over the Bible. Moses gets to the edge of the Red Sea. He strikes the Red Sea with his rod. The Red Sea opens. Elijah gets to the edge of the Jordan. He strikes the Jordan. The Jordan opens. Elisha does the same thing. Jesus shows them a superior one. He said, I don't even want to part the waters. I just want to walk over it. And he does it. Jesus is Jesus. They, that, that's what they, he's the son of God. He's the wonder worker. He's a miracle working man. He does not succumb to the base elements of life. He speaks to trees and they wilt overnight. He speaks to blind eyes and they open. He speaks to boisterous storms and they, they are calm. He picks just five loaves and two fish and he feeds multitudes. My concern and what we are looking at today is the other person who also walked on water. Simon Peter. He also walked on, I don't know how many steps he took. I don't know how long a distance or how short a distance he walked. But you know something? He walked on water. I've never known anybody after that who can genuinely, I don't know, there might be, who has, in fact, some people have attempted and it never happened well for them. But ladies and gentlemen, why Simon Peter? I believe that the Lord allowed this to happen with Simon Peter because he is a representative of you and I. I don't know about you, but Simon rem reminds me of myself. The man was temperamental. The man was import impulsive. When he came to pressure, he chickened out. He swore he didn't know Jesus. He, he failed in business. He fished all night and he fished at the wrong side of the boat. He ran a foot race with John and he lost the... I mean, everything wrong that can be wrong happened to Simon Peter. So Simon is just like you and I, maybe worse. But here, Simon is doing something exceptional. He is walking on water. This, ladies and gentlemen, is our burden. We are going to do an exceptional walk. Not on literal water. Not on literal water. But we are going to walk like we are going to take a path in life that will make people sit up and wonder that how could they do this. That is my burden tonight. That is the, you, don't miss the series because I'm going to bring out some interesting wisdom from all over the place. Leave Jesus out of this. Leave it, leave. I mean, he's Jesus. He's done his thing. But Simon Peter... In a boat with 11 other people. And he is the one walking on. That is exceptional. 
in your family, in your class, in your church, in your neighborhood, in your business, whatever it is, you are going to walk an exceptional walk. They never thought you could do it, but you could do it. Now let's unpack this in a little bit. Because you know something? There's always a backstory to the main story. No, don't forget, let me say it again. There's always a backstory to the main story. Many times we spend all our time studying people's success. Let me tell you, spend time studying how the process to their success. Because success leaves clues. And yet many people don't take notice. I pray that the Lord will open your eyes to secrets. Anytime you see success, listen, find out what it took for that success to happen. You know, in life, when you go out, there are things that you buy and they tell you um, it, 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 there's a trade secret. KFC will tell you that the secret is in the recipe. They never show you it's in the family. Closely guarded. In the same way, as an exceptional Christian, as an exceptional man or, or woman, you must trade with God in secret. Job, Job the great man said, as it was in the days of my youth, when the secret of the Lord was upon my tabernacle, when my children were yet upon me, a, the secret must rest upon you. The Bible says that the secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. It's something that you've got to understand. Let me show you something. In Isaiah chapter 45, listen, it doesn't matter how terrible your economy is. Listen, oil may be sold for $1,000 a barrel, but God is with you. It doesn't matter how desperately poor your nation is. There are secrets. It's, God said to Isaiah, take this scripture for yourself. Say it to yourself. Confess it. Believe it. Walk it. He said, I will go before you and I'll make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and I'll cut the bars of iron. Now look at this. Look at this. Look at this. He said, I will give you the treasures of darkness. There are treasures, but they are hidden in darkness. And God says, I'll give it to you. And the hidden riches of secret places. Listen, whatever nation that you are in, if there are rich people there, you must be one of them. Whatever nation that you are in, whatever society, whatever, ne whatever neighborhood, if people can break through, you also must break through. You are a child of God. You are a covenant child of God. There are some things that you have to assess. Don't sit down and wilt. Don't, 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 just, don't just bow to faith. No, vow to rate. Determine that you're right. It doesn't matter how old or young you are. You can do something with your life because he will go before you. He will give you, he will, he will give you the treasures of darkness. May God open your eyes. I pray that God will open your eyes. May God show you some business that nobody has thought about. May God show you some breakthrough that nobody has thought about. May God give you an idea that once it hits paper, listen, all everybody is doing all kinds of things. They are on YouTube, they are doing this. But can you can listen? All there is is not all there is to be. May the Lord open your eyes. May the Lord help you to use things that nobody respects to make some money in your life. You can do it. It's possible. Only if you would dare to become different or exceptional. Look at it. In Matthew's Gospel where we read, Jesus sends the disciples away. He says, go to the other side. Get in the boat. Now, excuse me, let me just... I'm getting very excited tonight. I, I hope I hope you are you are getting excited too. Let, let's see if we got some few people. Hey, Lady Posh, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Um, do we have any new people here? Yeah, a whole lot of you. Hey, Abba, Abba, how are you doing? I hope you're okay in your new place. We miss you already. Hannah, God bless you for staying up to watch us from the city of London. Adam, Kerry South Ghana, God bless you. Victoria, Mama Victoria, Wonder Woman, God richly bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, so good. Pastor Yabanfo from London, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Car Caroline Kunedu Ajua, God richly bless you, so good to have you. Hey, yes, yes, yes. The great Denzel, Denzel, how you doing? Hey, we're going to connect. I owe you a call, or you owe me a call. God richly bless you. Blessings upon you, blessings upon you. So many of you here, Michael, man of God, Michael and Nancy, Oklahoma City, God, good to have you here. Thank you so much for coming. GB Collections, yes, your test is your testimony in motion. Never forget that, never forget that, never forget that. All the way from the Bronx, New York, Apostle Festus Jimacy, God bless you so much. Maminya Miche, you are exceptional. Yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are, yes. You are. Now, listen, Jesus sends his disciples on the boat, go, row, and they start rowing. Look at verse number 23 of Matthew 14. When Jesus did that, the Bible says that he goes up to a mountain all by himself to pray. 
Think about it. You see, I want you to be exceptional. I want you to be different. Listen, if you want to be different, you want to be exceptional, find out what ordinary people do and don't do it. I'll repeat it. If you want to be different, you can't follow the crowd. Find out what ordinary people do and don't do that. It's as simple as that. Because the bottom of life is too crowded with turkeys. That is why you don't find eagles in captivity. Eagles don't flock. Eagles are, are birds of destiny. They fly above the storms. You are an eagle. An eagle is crying out for expression. Walk exceptional. Walk different. Act different. Talk different. Think different. Move different. Do things different. You are not ordinary. The disciples, the 12 of them, they got in the boat and started rowing to the other side. But Jesus goes to them. You know what he was doing? He was refueling. He was refocusing. He was recharging. That should be your lifestyle. Listen, let, let me just throw this in. Because I'll be dealing with that sometime later. That there's something called prayer. Prayer is not a spare time. Prayer is the main thing. Prayer is not a last resort. Prayer is the first response. Prayer is, is, is a lifeline. Prayer is a key. We'll look at it in another episode. Listen, when people are playing, you pray. I've got so many testimonies I can share with you, but today is not that day. But listen, even though the apprentices, the apprentices had a head start about four hours ahead of Jesus, they, they were roaring. But when we read it, we saw that Jesus at the fourth watch, he gets to them, he is walking. They are roaring, they are roaring, they are roaring, they are roaring, they are, roaring. They are tired. And yet, Jesus shows up beside them. You know what? He prayed first. Let me tell you something. I'm going to put it on the screen for you. Screenshot it, write it, copy it. The power of prayer will empower you to get there faster. The power of prayer. Please, when they call for prayer meeting, don't be distracted. Especially with today's social media, get a prayer meeting online. and that, Listen, get involved. If you feel that you don't have enough discipline to stay focused, if it is in-house, go in-house. Go there. Spend time with people to pray. If you are doing this by yourself and you are easily distracted, can you just, can you just put some discipline into this? Get up. Do some. Move. Pray first. The power of prayer will empower you to get... Now, please hear me. Prayer does not do your work for you. Don't, don't ever... Forget. Because there are people that, that, that make, make praying even like a curse. Because everything, prayer, prayer, we, we are praying, we are praying, and you are not acting. No. No, no, that's what, I'm to, no that's, that's what I'm talking about. Prayer is a catalyst. Prayer is not a substitute. Prayer is not a substitute. Prayer is something that empowers you. It energizes you. It enhances your work. When you pray over your business, when you pray before you take that exam, when you pray before you do that journey, when you pray before you go to that interview, when you pray before that, that negotiation, let me tell you, prayer will energize you. Prayer will let you get there first. The great John Wesley says something that is so poignant. He said that I get so busy every day that if I don't spend the first three hours of the day praying, I'm not able to catch up. Think about it. I get so busy that if I don't spend the first three hours of every day praying, I don't catch up. Of course, John Wesley is John Wesley. You are not John Wesley. You are not, I'm not expecting you to pray, to pray three hours. But can you give some little prayer, some time, some discipline? Consistent prayer. Life. Now, they see Jesus walking. And all of them are startled. I'm sure it's a considerable distance because they didn't recognize him. And they say, well, it's an apparition. It's a ghost. It's something that's coming after us. You know, in those days, in, and even today, people have all kinds of superstition. Uh, they go on the sea, they see uh, some, some mummy waters, and they see all kinds of things coming to get them. So, naturally, they were afraid. You know, a couple of years ago, some years ago, we, we were on that same sea. We, we saw how the thing was, and they tell us that it can, it can be calm like, 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 like a sheet. Then all of a sudden, very boisterous. You know, and it was very cataclysmic. And in the distance, remember, it was the night. And they see this figure. He's walking towards them. And they are scared. And they say, it's a ghost. Then Jesus speaks to them. A calming voice. That, hey, calm down. Take a chill pill. Cool down. It is me. Do not be afraid. It's me. Do not be afraid. Now, this is where the exceptional work comes in. Look at verse number 28. This is where the exceptional. Remember, there are 12 people in a boat. 
But only one, you, yes, you, madam, yes, you, yes, sir, yes, it's you, one, you, out of the whole family, you, out of the whole class, you, out of the whole church, you, out of the whole group, you, out of the whole office, you, out of the whole nation, you, 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 yes, you. The Twelve of them, eleven they didn't say anything. One, remember I told you the Bible is using Simon Peter as a prototype because we are just like him. And the Bible says, only Peter said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you. Only Peter asked to be invited to the exceptional work. That should be your secret. Hear me. Determine not to be like anybody else. Peter is in the same boat with 11 other colleagues. In the same boat with the same church members. In the same boat with the same gossiping partners. In the same boat with the little minds. In the same boat with the same culture, in the same boat with the same co workers, in the same boat with the same family members, in the same boat with the same hangout bodies, in the same boat with the same team members, in the same boat with the same gender, in the same boat with the same people. We are not an island, we are connected with people, but be an exception, be like Peter. You are not like anybody else. The 11 boat potatoes, they stayed in the boat. It's only Peter. He was exceptional. Listen, their limitation was the boat. They were afraid of the water. They were afraid of the water. But Peter said, I will not allow this boat to contain me. I will not allow what the people will think. Listen, they were all in the boat. When Peter said, I want to come to you. Don't you suppose that they would have murmured and said, who do you think you are? Simon Peter, have you ever seen anybody walk on water? They brought out the royal act. They read it to him. Haven't you, haven't you read in chemistry that any body that is, any, any, any object that is heavier than, than water sinks? And Peter, after all, you are even overweight. How dare you? Are, 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 you, are, you, are you something that can walk on water? How dare you? Have you ever seen that before? You are a fisherman. Have you ever seen anybody apart from fish? I, I mean, I, I beg your pardon. Have you seen anybody just walk on water? We all sink when we go into this thing. Only boats flow. You are not a boat. We are in the security of a boat. How can you do that? Am I talking to somebody? Anytime you want to do an exceptional work, be ready for people to bombard your ears. They want to put you where you belong. They want to, they want to put you in a box. They want, they, they, want to, they, they want to put you in a parameter. So long as all of us in the boat of limitation, we are okay. Have you noticed that in this life? So long as you are just like anybody else, they tend to like you. But when you make up your mind, they make an announcement that I am going to become different. Be ready for an assault. There's always a price. Listen, the only price that you may have to pay sometimes for the exceptional work is to forsake some people. I will say it again. The only price that sometimes you have to pay in order to become everything that God has ordained for you to be is to dare to forsake some comfort zone and some people. Understand that? Simon Peter refused to allow his, his colleagues, their limitation to limit him. Remember, exceptional, you are not like anybody else. Don't let anybody's limitations limit you. No. Don't allow it. Oh, and we did this and we failed. So what? Oh, nobody has done this before. So what? There's an exception. I'm exceptional. I'm not like anybody else. Oh, this place is too choked. So what? You can do it. I remember when, when we were coming into Atlanta. Do you know how many people told me, you can, you can go to Atlanta. So many mega churches everywhere, blah, blah, blah. And I told somebody, that's, that's even easy. Because it gives you a blueprint. It gives you something to look at. Don't be little-minded. Be like someone. Peter. I have a question for you. Who is limiting you? Who told you you can't do it? Because you're a different gender. Today is International Women's Day. Let me address a woman. Who told you, woman, that you can't be a president because you're a woman? Who told you you cannot be that CEO because you're a woman? Who told you you cannot be strong because you're a woman? Who told you? Who told you, woman? Who told you? Listen, so long as God is with you, you can walk an exceptional walk as a woman. You can cross barriers. You can, you can raise the bar. You can set standards in the name of the Lord. Listen, why are you allowing people who have never done that to determine your limitations? Many times it's people who haven't done anything who tell you you can't do it. If you've noticed that in this life. Listen, please, stop listening to me. I hate to use words like that, but my eyes are red. Stop 
listening to losers. They are only looking to recruit weak minds. Stop listening to them. Step out of the boat. Step out of your limitation. Have the audacity to believe that these people's limitation will not be my standard. That, that has been my, li my life. That I refuse, regardless of where I find myself, I'm not going to allow cultural limitations to limit me. It should never limit you. No. You are better than people think. You have something on the inside of you. Let me tell you something. It could be friends. It could be family. It could be anything. Don't let their limitation hold you down. Sometimes you have to leave a company. You are an eagle. You may have been raised among chicken. But the day comes that you got to get up. You were never built to be contained by the boat of a limitation. You were never built to be contained by cultural beliefs. You were never built to be contained by haters and intimidators and naysayers. You were built to do amazing. Please read my lips. You are exceptional. Walk exceptional. Do exceptional. Speak exceptional. Breakthrough exceptional. Rise exceptional. Move exceptional. Walk exceptional. You are a barrier breaker. You are a line crosser. You are different. Let me finish tonight. Let me give you some three keys from this little scripture that we read in Matthew 14. We'll be doing a lot of work in there. That will give you a key to work exceptional. Number one, you need exposure. Oh, I wish, I wish I had a whole set. I was just thinking and meditating about that. Maybe I need a whole session on exposure. Look at this. Simon Peter was a fisherman by trade. All his life, he has been fishing. He has been around water all his life. There had never been one time that Peter had attempted to walk on water. Until he was exposed to water walking. Exceptional walking by his mentor. What are you learning from your mentor? Who is your mentor? Who are you following? Who are you observing? Listen, when Jesus called some men to follow him, follow me and I'll make you, there were several components in there. But one of them, one of them is a call to transformation. I'll make you. But another is a call to observation. Observe me. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me. Observation. Hear me. When Simon Peter was exposed, exposure to his mentor Jesus walking on water, it woke something on the inside of him. I'm putting something out there for you. Exposure will awake your expectation. Exposure awakens the expectation on the inside of you. I have a question. Why do you, why has God allowed you to see what you see? Sometimes you go to places and you see things. It's not to shame you. It's to awaken something. Listen, stop being a village champion. Stop being the, 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 the greatest guy around. Listen, if you're in a company and you are the smartest, you don't belong there anymore. Go to places that will, you see things and you hear things and you meet people that will challenge you, that will pull something out of you because it is exposure. Let me tell you, one of the greatest favors that God will give to you is exposure. Because favor puts you in the vicinity of greatness so that you can know that you can do it. Because, listen, once you get exposed, nobody can unexpose you. Once you get exposed, you become a candidate for an exceptional work. When God exposes you to certain people, certain places, and certain things, they inspire you. Count yourself favored when God brings you into the vicinity. Unfortunately, there are people that God gives you the opportunity to be exposed to great people. You see their secrets, you see their weaknesses, you see, and all there is to capture something, take photographs, and go and put there, I know him, I know her. You are weak-minded. You can't work exceptional. Be different. Be different. Am I talking to you tonight? Please hear me. Greatness sets you apart. You don't do what everybody does. There are too many today, everything, they have recorded you and they have listened to you and, they, and I'm going to... Did it, did it pay your electricity bill? Let me tell you something. You are not growing any younger. It is time for you to determine that if God has brought me into the, the vicinity of a great person or a great place, it's not for me to destroy the place. Do you know how many, listen, I get to, with, with all humility, I get to meet powerful people, great people. There are some names if I mention, say, did you meet them? Not that I meet them, they met me. 
But listen, I don't put it on my mouth and walk all over the place. I see things, I hear things, but you know something? They inspire me. And many of them, they make sure that there are people who don't come in their vicinity because people mismanage exposure with jealousy, with destruction. There are cultures like that. Listen, when you get exposure, the person or that situation is showing you what you can do and who you can become. Exposure. May God Almighty help you to be exposed to, be, to, to people, to places that will ignite greatness on the inside of you. When you see that thing, it means you can be exceptional. Number one, exposure. Number two is invitation. You need invitation. If you are going to walk an exceptional walk, you need invitation. Now you realize that when Simon Peter said to the Lord, if it is you, let me come. Peter didn't step out until Jesus said, come. Until Jesus said, come. He stepped out at the invitation of Jesus, which means you don't just do things all because you feel like. You do things because other people are doing it. You, feel, you do things because, because it's, the, it's, it's the fact. No. You do it because there's an invitation from above to you and to you alone. Simon Peter walked for me, even not on water, but on the word, come. It was his word. Do you know, do you know why the Egyptians who were, who were chasing the, the, the children of Israel through the Red Sea, do you know why they, 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 were sunk, they sunk in the Red Sea? Do you know why? Because they were following a word that was not theirs. When the Lord said to Moses, tell, when the Lord said to Moses, tell the children of Israel to go forward, it was for Israel, it wasn't for the Egyptians. So when they followed a word that was not theirs, they sank. Have your word from the Lord. Don't follow other people's word. You didn't hear what they heard. Because what blesses them may bury you. We are different. You are separate. You are exceptional. Hear me. There's, there's a voice. There's something beyond the normal. It's calling you. You know that you are not ordinary. You dream it. You, you are frustrated. Listen, the frustration is not witchcraft attack. Stop all going around all the prayer lines and prayer meetings. Because, listen, let me tell you, the frustration is because a voice that is greater than today is calling you. Those in your circle are not hearing what you are hearing. But go on. Remember Paul the Apostle when he was Saul of Tarsus on the way to Damascus. He was knocked off his horse. When he was giving his testimony, he said that at noonday I fell from my horse and a voice was, he said, all the people around me, they, they, they heard the noise, but they didn't hear what I heard. Invitation. Hear me. Get out of the limitations of other people's work and step out and do the exceptional work. What is he telling you? What has he showed you? Don't dilly-dally. Don't wait. It's time to do something. And the third, remember, exposure. And after exposure, invitation. And then finally, initiation, initiative. When the Lord said to Peter, come. Peter didn't now go to a prayer meeting. He took the initiative and he made a move. It's time to make a move. Determine today that after you have prayed, after you have received the word, you make a move. Are you going to start that ministry? Are you going to start that business? Are you going to step out and do that IT thing? To take that course? The winds may be contrary, but like Simon Peter, can you step out? Step out. You are afraid. Go on. Step out. Jesus said, do not be afraid. You come. And when Simon Peter, the Bible says that when, when, when he stepped on the water, he started walking towards you. I, I am sure it wasn't a short distance. I am sure. Because if it was a short distance, they would have recognized Jesus. They had to, he had to walk a little distance to get close to Jesus. And that is when he began to sing because he looked around. And said, we'll, come back, we'll come to that later. The Bible says that he began to sing. But you know something? Step out. Because the one who said to you, come, he will rescue you. Jesus did not let Simon Peter sink because you see who called him. Listen, I'd rather take three steps on water and sink than to live my whole life confined in the limitation of a boat called ordinary. I hope you have learned something today. Never forget this. Make a move. Start it. Do it. It's not too late. It's not too late. God did it with Sarah at the age of 90. God did it with Abraham at the age of 100. God did it. Caleb was asking for mountains at the age of 85. It's never too late. You are exceptional. And you walk the exceptional walk. You were never designed to be normal. You are a candidate for an exceptional walk. 
This is a series. This is the introduction. Don't miss the other weeks. It's going to be a blast. I hope you've learned something. I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to pray with you because, before I let you go. I know other parts of the world is a little bit late, but that is what exceptional people do. Listen, I told you that if you want to be exceptional, look at what ordinary people do and don't do it. Sometimes you need to stay up. Get up from the bed. Don't doze off because there's information that you need. It's very important. When I was on the other side of the world some weeks back, I used to sit up just to catch up at the other side. I refused to lie on my bed. I walk around because there's information that I need to make my life better. Life is not easy. Life is not cheap. Life happens to those who are determined to get out of the boat. There are 11 people there in the boat who are trying to stop you. Don't let them stop you. You are the number 12. You are the Peter. You are the water walker. You are the line crosser. You are the barrier breaker. I believe in your future. Your future is great. Listen, I'm going to pray with you. But let me say a very, very, very big thank you to all. So many of you have elected to be partners with us. Um, I was going to, God willing, maybe next week I'll, I'll, show, I'll show you some photos uh, of some things that are happening with us. Um, I'm so grateful to God. Gradually, little by little, we get in there. Um, I told you that uh, we have a vision. We have a vision to be uh, exceptional in some of the things that we do. And thank you for your support. Others have started sending. Uh, we are going to send you this week. We, uh, this week, expect some, some messages from us. We, we, we've put some things together, some package together to send to you, our partners. If you want to partner with us, there are all the others. I think we have acknowledged you. Um, we're going to send a list to you. We are going to ask that um, you, you give us some information. We are going to send some information to you. And we ask that, um, please, 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 if you want to partner with us, just $5 a month, $10 a month, $100 a month, $200, $1,000. I do the same thing. You can do the same thing. Help us do this. Just send us a note. DM us. Send me a note. Do something. Go to uh, leader at advanced Let's Right there on your screen. Send me a note. All of you got all your details. We're going to get all the details. We're going to send all our details to you so you can partner with us. Listen, know what your money is doing whilst you are alive, not after you are dead and you've written a will. Know what your money, what your money does whilst you are alive. It's a, it's a better prospect to know that I was part of this great project. I was part to train these leaders in Africa. I was part to, to raise this president to come out of this nation somewhere. I have a dream. We will not die until we see the manifestation of this dream. It's exceptional. So please help us. In the light of that, before we go, I want to put our giving platforms out there for just one minute, just one minute. I just want you to help us. If, if, you, if, if you want to... If you thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I see you there. Thank you, thank you, woman of God. Thank you. Listen, we have our giving platforms out there. If you are in the continental USA, you can do cash up. The number is there 678 is the same number for Zell. Please do that. Go right there. If you want to do PayPal, it's Advanced Life. And please, again, when you go to PayPal for Advanced Life, there are a few Advanced Lives that we have seen over there. You will see our logo, the one behind me right here. This one, uh, we're going to pan it a little bit down. Come down. And, yes, you will see this logo. Never forget, this is Adin Krahine. It's a, it's a symbol for leadership. It's a symbol for leadership uh, and, and for resilience. So please do that. Or if you are in Ghana, Nigeria, or La Cote d'Ivoire, wherever in Africa, you can do Vodafone Cash, Franco Fuswapia, Plus two three three two four eight two one four four seven two. Only one minute, and I'll come back. Only one minute, and I'll come back. We we'll put our platforms in there. Let's do that. Let's do that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you all. Thank you all. Wow, it's been a blast tonight. Don't go. I'm going to pray for you, Uncle B. God bless you. Yes, Mami Tebua, you are exceptional. You are exceptional, Pastor Alex. God bless you, our life family. Yes, thank you so 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 much. Nancy, Nancy Thompson, God richly bless, 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 bless. Oh, who haven't I, I acknowledged? I'm waiting for somebody, somebody that I'm missing somebody. Apostle Eric Vanderpoy, God bless you. Thank you from Lawrenceville. God richly bless you. Yes, same boat as your Freeman, but we are different. We are getting out. We are getting out. Just a few seconds, and I'm going to take it off. Please help us. Just give. You can do cash up. You can do Zelle, Advanced Life, uh, PayPal. And do that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so, 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 so much. Thank you. Rhoda, Rhoda, God bless you. Rhoda Afia Ajima, Bethel Law. Listen, 
If you have any immigration issues and everything, let me advertise. Go to Bethel Law. I think next time we're going to put it on our platform. She's one of the best immigration attorneys. And I, I, mean, I mean it. She understands your language. She understands where you are. She is feisty. She fights for you. But she knows her stuff. But you know something different? Rhoda carries grace and favor. I normally wouldn't advertise this, but here I can vouch for her. Rhoda, if you go to Bethel, Bethel Law. In, in Massachusetts, Boston, Massachusetts. You can Google it. Because next time, I think I'll get a business card and talk. I mean business. Rhoda is out of the ballpark. I've sent a few people her way. She is awesome. She's amazing. God bless you. Hey, Pastor Richard. Pastor Richard from Minnesota. God richly bless you. Nanaba, God richly bless you so much. Priscilla, what a wonderful woman. Uh, Kwabna, my great Kwabna, says, watch the great leader. God bless you. Yes, Ajakum Kwaku, Kwaku Ajakum Wapo, stop listening to losers. Yes, I like that. I like that. I put it there. God will bless you. So, so my listen, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Let you be on your way. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, I thank you for this journey that we have started, the journey of exceptional. We are, we are not ordinary. I pray that every ear that has heard this word tonight, Lord, increase their revelation, increase their uh, understanding. I pray that the enemy, like a bird, will not come and take the seeds of these words of greatness out of their hearts. Incubate them on the inside of them. Let them have some fire in their belly, like Simon Peter, to step out of the confines and the limitations of their boat in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray for you that God will give you the treasures of darkness. Show you the hidden riches of secret places that you may know that God Almighty is with you. I pray that you will not struggle where people struggle. You will not fall where people fall. You will not go through, you may go through what people go through, but your outcome will be different. I pray in the name of the Lord that whatever people are built around you will not be something to keep you out, but will keep your enemies out. May God Almighty keep you secure. May his hand rest upon you like never before. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, agree with me and say amen and amen. Listen, happy International Women's Day. God bless you. We thank God for your lives. I love you. Thank you for your partnership. Drop me a line. If you need a prayer point, if you need a prayer or whatever, still give it to us because we do pray. We do pray right here for you. So on behalf of myself and my staff here and all my media team, this is Franco Fusopia, your ambassador of hope saying, Tara for now. God bless you. I love you. I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye.